visit him one day, and he said to me that Professor Barnard had offered him a new heart. Uh, quite frankly, I thought he was delirious from all the drugs that he'd had, and I thought he meant a valve or a, a pacemaker, and uh, not to upset him, to pacify him, I let it go at that, you know. But uh, the next day I came again, and he, he continued speaking about a new heart. And uh, his family also said, well, if he's talking about a new heart, let him talk if it makes him happy. None of us realized that it, it would uh, be true. And then on the third day when I arrived, they'd moved him out of the ward and into a private room in uh, the upstairs ward in C2. Um, I came up to see him there, and uh, Professor Barnard called me out. This was uh, approximately three weeks ago. And he spoke to me privately, and he told me about this heart uh, transplant. Um, I asked him what his chances were without it, and he said, no. And I said uh, to him, if it succeeds, would he have a reasonable span of life? And he said, not uh, if it succeeds, it will succeed. And he said, uh, uh, Mrs. Wyshkansky, my problem is not to uh, give your, uh, your husband the, the heart transplant. Uh, my problem is to keep him alive until such time as I can do it. Did you must have been a sadness to you that your husband's chance to live came as the result of that tragic accident. I gather you've seen Denise's father. Yes, I have. I, I was very shocked. If more so because... Uh, I happened, unfortunately, to have seen the accident as well, never realising there would be any connection. I'd left my husband in the afternoon after visiting him and drove along the main road to go home and, and I actually saw it, which was even more dreadful afterwards when I got to know that that was the donor. Uh, it is a very tragic figure. I think he's a wonderful man to have made this magnificent gesture. Now,